We can generalize this idea of the internal direct product, but it's a little bit more complicated than you might expect. So we're going to start with a group of normal subgroups. Now you might be wondering why these subgroups have to actually be normal. Really, it's because this is going to lead to a really important idea here in a minute. But in general, without going into the in nitty gritty details, it's that normal gives us a very weak version of commutivity. It's not commutivity by element, but it's commutivity by coset. And that's really kind of important. That leads to a bunch of different things, including the big result that we're going to be talking about. Now, continuing on, we want G to be that whole multiplying those sets together. So that would be the set of all H1, H2, up to Hn, such that each of those Hi's come from the parent capital Hi. That's again what you would expect. It's the bit about the intersections being the identity that gets more complicated. Because as I multiply these things together, the sets get bigger and bigger. H1 times H2, you have all the elements of H2, all the elements of H1, and all the things you can get by multiplying elements of H1 times elements of H2. Add in H3, it gets even bigger. Those are the sets we kind of need to look at. So H1, H2, up to HK intersect with HK plus 1. When I multiply the first K of these subgroups together and intersect it with the next subgroup, that has to be just the identity. In that case, if we've got a bunch of normal subgroups to, that we can multiply together to get that, and we've got this weird bit where as they build, they always just share the identity with the next set, then we can say that G is equal to the direct product of those normal subgroups. Now, I slipped up just a little bit there. I said is equal to the direct product, and I didn't specify internal direct product. That's mainly because it turns out that it doesn't really matter. If we have G is equal to this internal direct product of a bunch of groups that we just defined, then G is in fact isomorphic to the external direct product of those things. Good an example here. Let's take a look at the group U30. Again, it would be better to look at a non-abelian example. It's just they get really hard to do. So U30 includes 1, 7, uh, 13, uh, I missed 11, uh, 17, 19, 23, and 29. I'm going to claim that U30 is equal to U630 direct product of U1030 and direct product U1530. 
Now I put in the U1530 because I want it to be more than two subgroups, but it turns out that U1530 is actually kind of boring because if we look at this whole list, the only thing that's a multiple of 15 plus one is one. Fortunately, the other two are more interesting. U630 has 1, 7, 13, and 19 in it. And U1030 has 1 and 11. So to do a few things here, let's go ahead and look at it in terms of this definition for a higher product. So if I take the first two of these things, certainly those only share one. And so I'm going to get, when I start multiplying these things together, one times one is one, one times 11 is 11, seven times one is seven, seven times 11 is 17, 13 times one is 13, 13 times 11 is uh, let's see need to work this out 13 times 11 is going to give me 143 and when I do that mod 30 is going to give me 23 uh, 19 times 1 is, of course, 19. And 19 times 11 is going to be 29. Now, you notice here, we've already got all the elements of U30 in there. And this doing the direct product with 1 doesn't really do much. But it does match our definition up here. If I take that, a set that I just came up with, intersect the next one, we have then just, the intersection is just one. So because this thing is the internal direct product of these three groups, then U30 has to be isomorphic to U630 external direct product, U1030 external direct product, U1530. Let's actually go ahead and list the elements there. These are going to be ordered triples. where the first element comes from U6, the second element comes from U10, and the third element comes from U15. So we're going to get things like 1, 1, 1. We're going to get 1, 11, 1. We're going to get 7, 1, 1. We're going to get 7, 11, 1. We're going to get 13, 1, 1. We're going to get 13, 11, 1. We're going to get 19, 1, 1. And we're going to get 19, 11, 1. Those eight elements correspond to the eight elements here. These two things, these two groups, U30 and this weird thing of of triples are going to be isomorphic to each other. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole proof of that, but the idea is the internal direct product, the external direct product, in some sense, in a real isomorphic sense, is the same thing.